This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I had explained the effects of few planets in the house of Virgo. Let me explain the effect of the planet Mercury when it resides in the house of Virgo. The Virgo sign is the house of Mercury. And in this sign, Mercury can attain three states like exaltation, multricone and also own house status. When there is no connection with malefic, Mercury in quadrant house will give severe Kendradipati dosha. The Kendradipati dosha will apply for the natives who were born as dual sign ascendant. For example, for native of Pisces ascendant, the house of Virgo will be the seventh house and when Mercury resides in the house of Virgo without any connection of malefic it delivers worse effects. When Mercury is in the house of Virgo without any connection of malefic and remains Subhatva, then it delivers Kendradipati Dosha. For the native of Sagittarius Ascendant, the house of Virgo becomes the 10th house and the lone Mercury that resides in the house of Virgo without any malefic connection and remain subhatva, then it delivers Kendradipati dosha. For the native of Gemini ascendant, the house of Virgo is the fourth house and when Mercury is exalted in the house, that is in the Virgo sign, during the major planetary period of Mercury, it will definitely deliver Kendradipati dosha, even though it is Lagna Lord. All the Kendradipati dosha will be delivered during the major planetary period or minor planetary period that is Dasha or Antar Dasha. When the ascendant lot of any dual sign resides in the ascendant house itself, then it is not Kendradipati dosha. Though Mercury is the ascendant lot for the native of Gemini ascendant, Definitely, the Mercury in the 4th house to the Ascendant, that is house of Virgo, the Mercury will deliver Kendradipati Dosha. You might assume that when Mercury resides in the house of Virgo, for the native of Gemini Ascendant, the native will be well educated. There are many natives of Gemini Ascendant whose Mercury is in sign of Virgo, still completely illiterate. I have seen so many natal charts. The native had never gone to school. The mercury was neither retrograde nor malefic, not even subhatva. There is no connection of planets like natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus. So, for the native of Gemini ascendant, whose ascendant lord is in the fourth house with exaltation status or multricone status or own house status, then Mercury delivers Kendradipati Dosha during its Dasha period. One of my relatives had not even completed third grade at school who is the native of Gemini ascendant and was affected by Kendradipati Dosha of Mercury. My relative was a middle-aged man now and he was inclined towards cattle farming and poultry when he was young. So Mercury in the house of Virgo will definitely deliver Kendradipati Dosha. There is an important point to note here. If only the planet is alone, then it delivers Kendradipati Dosha. Otherwise, it does not deliver Kendradipati Dosha. For example, when Mercury is Pabatva, that is, when it is in connection with Malafic, like Saturn or Mars, 
or when it is retrograde, then it does not deliver Kendra Dibadi Dosha. So, in a nadal chart, you have to check whether Mercury is in a state to deliver Kendra Dibadi Dosha or whether it is alone. When Mercury is in conjunction with the Sun in this house, it is good. You have to predict like Mercury is in conjunction with its friendly planet Sun. The Mercury should not be in conjunction with the Saturn. If it is in conjunction with Saturn, then Mercury becomes Pabatwa. More importantly, Mercury should not be in connection with the Venus here. In Uttarkalamrita, the great poet Kalidas have mentioned a point that when a debilitated planet is in conjunction with the exalted planet, then the debilitated planet delivers its effects rather the exalted planet. The great poet Kalida says that an exalted planet which is in conjunction with the debilitated planet attains Sunya strength. There are many intricate details that great poet Kalidas intends to mention about Sunya Bala. Varaha Mihira, Parashara Maharishi, the great poet Kalidas are the strong pillars of Vedic astrology. These sages and poets are the greatest astronomers of the world. There are certain intricate concepts for which we will rack our minds to understand. While Kalidas mentions the strength of the planet, he details about Shunyabala or Nishbala and there are many such intricacies that Kalidas mentions in his book. In just one sloka, Kalidas explains the meaning of Shunyabala. When a planet is exalted and is in conjunction with the planet that is debilitated, it strengthens the debilitated planet and the exalted planet loses its own strength. Kalidas mentions the meaning of Nishbala in just one word in a single sloka. The Venus attains Nichibanga Raj Yoga status when it is in conjunction with exalted Mercury in the house of Virgo. There is difference between the Nichibanga status and Nichibanga Raj Yoga status. The Raj Yoga is attained by a conjunction of an exalted planet. When a planet is in connection with the exalted planet or the full moon, then it can attain the status of Raj Yoga. Therefore, when Venus is in conjunction with exalted Mercury in the house of Virgo, then Mercury loses its strength and Venus gains its strength through Mercury. Therefore, when Mercury is in conjunction with Venus, it is not good for Mercury. When Mercury is in conjunction with the planet Sun, there is no Kendra Dipati Dosha. I always repeat a point in many of my videos that Mercury does not have combustion Dosha. I have even noticed that few great astrologers mentioned the point that Mercury has Astanga Dosha. If your learning is in depth in the field of astrology, then definitely you will learn that Mercury has no Astanga Dosha. All the original dictums anonymously say that Mercury does not have combustion or Astanga Dosha. So in any situation, Mercury does not have Astanga Dosha or combustion Dosha. Mercury can be in conjunction with the Sun in the house of Virgo. So far, I have mentioned what is Kendra Dipati Dosha and what is the antidote for the Kendra Dipati Dosha? A person who has got Mercury with own house status or exaltation status or Mool Trikon status will be earning their bread by their intelligence. The person will be extremely intelligent. The next planet that I am going to explain is Jupiter. A planet that should not reside in the house of Virgo is Jupiter. Because Jupiter will reside in the quadrant house to its own house. A natural benefit should be in a trine house from its own house. When Jupiter resides in the house of Virgo, it is the 10th house from Sagittarius and for Pisces it is the 7th house. When Jupiter resides in the house of Virgo, 
it aspects its own house by its seventh aspect, thus strengthening its own house Pisces. Yet, this is an inimical house to Jupiter. When Jupiter is residing alone in the house of Virgo, it will be in an uncomfortable state. When Jupiter resides in the house of Virgo, the house of Virgo will get Subhatva and Jupiter makes the Capricorn house Subhatva by its fifth aspect. And by seventh aspect, Jupiter makes the Pisces house Subhatva and strengthens the Taurus house by its ninth aspect. I always say a nobleman is always a nobleman and I compare Jupiter with a nobleman. So, when Jupiter resides in the house of Virgo, though it is an enemical house to Jupiter, it will deliver its effects. So, try to understand the Sthanabala and depending on which house, the house of Virgo is to the ascendant to make predictions. If the native is Virgo ascendant itself, then Jupiter will gain Digbala. It is not such an auspicious house for Jupiter. When Jupiter resides in house of Virgo, the house gets Subhatva. The Jupiter will be a little bit weakened for the person whose Jupiter resides in the house of Virgo. Since the house of Virgo is inimical to the Jupiter, Jupiter's strength is reduced a little in order to deliver complete benefits. Let me explain the next planet Venus. This is the house where Venus gets debilitated. Venus is the planet that gets Parivartan with Mercury often. That is, they exchange their houses mutually. In most of the natal charts, Venus and Mercury will be in Parivartan or Venus will be in conjunction with Mercury. However, even if the planet is alone, it can give benefits. Whether it is Jupiter or Venus, even when they are debilitated, they will definitely deliver their significance, but at a reduced level. In general, when a malafic such as Saturn gets debilitated, it is really good. Because Saturn will be in a state to deliver all its Pabatwa significance or bad significance in a reduced state. So, when a planet is debilitated, many people assume it differently or wrongly. Most of the hearsay rules of astrology are not valid at all. I definitely believe that my videos will be like an eye-opener for many people who aspire to learn astrology and who aspire to become astrologers. Because out of my experience of 10 to 15 years of research, I ignored all the hearsay information about astrology. The debilitation of the planet is one among them. When a planet is debilitated, its ability is reduced in order to give the complete significance of the planet. But it will give at a reduced level. How to analyze the strength of the planet in order to deliver the significance? If Jupiter is 100% powerful, then the person would be like an Ambani, a big shot. If Jupiter is debilitated, the person will earn 1000 rupees a day as his wage. If Jupiter is exalted, then it will give hundreds of crores of money. This is the difference. Is 1000 rupees a day not enough for us? Jupiter has this ability because Jupiter is such a huge natural benefit. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Rahu or Saturn, then the nature of the Jupiter is changed. When Jupiter is alone residing in the house in the debilitation status, then it has the ability to deliver the significance but at a reduced level. For a common man, the strength of the debilitated Jupiter is indeed enough. In a similar fashion, you have to predict the Venus as well. Though Venus is in the debilitated state, it will deliver its significance when it is in the house of Virgo. It delivers the pleasures. This is the intricacy of the debilitated planet. When Venus is exalted, the person will be surrounded by beauty queens. The women will be interested towards a person whose Venus is exalted. 
Venus delivers boundless comfort, luxury, etc. When Venus is debilitated in house of Virgo, the planet will offer only one girl. To live the marital life, one girl is enough. When a planet is debilitated, it is ready to give the significance but at a reduced level. So even though Venus is debilitated in the house of Virgo, it has the ability to deliver its significance to the least level. If Venus is in conjunction with Mercury, then Venus is not considered to be in debilitation. Nichabanga is really a high status, so when Venus is Nichabanga, it delivers the complete significance of the Venus. For example, vehicles, luxury, comfort, everything, including the carnal pleasures. Therefore, in brief, Venus can be alone in the house of Virgo, Venus can also be in conjunction with Mercury. When Mer Venus is in conjunction with Saturn, though it is a friendly planet, it is not good to the Virgo sign. The major planetary period of Venus is not good to the spouse when Venus and Saturn are in conjunction. When Venus and Saturn is in conjunction, it says that the spouse is not of good character. When I say this, do not be skeptical immediately that if you have the combination of Venus and Saturn, your wife would be so. Because there are a lot of combinations and exceptions in the field of astrology. In this case, when Venus is in connection with Jupiter or Venus is in connection with Moon or Venus is in connection with Mercury, the predictions will change. To make an exact prediction or an accurate prediction, you have to consider a lot of points and merely just by one statement, you cannot conclude any prediction. Please read the articles that I have written. Based on just one rule, you cannot make a complete prediction. Those who are learning the fundamentals of astrology, please do not make hasty predictions. In one of my videos, when I told that while Rahu resides in the house of Leo, it affects the father's status. I noticed some of my subscribers had mentioned that they have Rahu in the house of Leo and they raised a doubt whether their father will be affected during the major planetary period of Rahu. It is such a hasty conclusion and incorrect one because you have to decide the status of the father on many points, you have to check the status of the sun first of all and you also have to check the lord of the ninth house and you have to consider all these three points to make a good prediction. Post checking the house of Leo, the status of sun, the status of the ninth house, you have to make a conclusion. So Venus can reside alone in the house of Virgo but it should not be in conjunction with the Saturn in the house of Virgo. When Venus is in conjunction with the Saturn, there will be a combined effect. Saturn will be strengthened and Venus will be weakened when Venus is in conjunction with Saturn. That is, Saturn will become Subhatva by the conjunction of Venus and Venus will lose its strength. When Venus is in conjunction with Rahu, then it loses its strength to a greater extent. Please replace the word Venus by the relationship wife. The next step is that you have to check the lord of the seventh house and also you have to check whether the native will go through the major planetary period of Venus or the major planetary period of Saturn or that of Rahu. Imagine that Venus is totally spoiled in the natal chart of a person and the native was born during the major planetary period of Sun. Then the NATO will undergo the major planetary period of Venus around 90 years and at that time, what is great loss? There is no great loss when a major planetary period of Venus happens for a person of around 90 years. Astrology is a bunch of different combination of rules. Venus should not be Pabatwa when it resides in the house of Virgo. Even if it is in conjunction with Jupiter, it is okay. It becomes Subhatva 
and I have published few videos regarding the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. In a nutshell, when Venus gets debilitated and it is alone in the house of Virgo, it is good. It will not do worse effects to a great extent. When Venus resides alone in the house of Virgo, it can deliver its significance. When the moon is in the seventh house, Pisces, from the house of Virgo, then Venus will be in the Chandra Adiyoga, then the significance of Venus will be delivered more. When Venus is in the quadrant house, that is Chandra Kendra, it is more auspicious. This particular status is almost equal to the exaltation status of Venus. When Venus is in conjunction with Mercury, then definitely Venus is considered to be exalted. Based on the degrees of conjunction with the Mercury, the strength of the exaltation will vary. The Venus should not be in conjunction with Rahu, Saturn or Mars. When there is such a conjunction, the Venus will make these planets Subhatva and Venus will lose its own strength. I have also published few videos about the conjunction of Venus and Mars. Please watch my videos. I hope you would have understood the effect of the planet Venus in the house of Virgo. The next planet that I am going to explain is about Saturn. When Saturn resides in the house of Virgo, it is really good. This is a very friendly house to the planet of Saturn. The Saturn will be in the 8th house from its own house Aquarius, fixed Rashi, Sira Rashi. When a malefic is in the 8th house from its own house and that too resides in a friendly house, it is really good. When Saturn resides in the house of Virgo, it is really in a very good mood. In addition to this, if it is connected to Jupiter or Venus, it will deliver great benefits. To the native of Aquarius Ascendant, when Saturn resides in the house of Virgo, it will be in the 8th house to the Aquarius. When a person is native of Aquarius Ascendant and when Saturn is in the 8th house from its own house, then it is a yoga. The Aquarius sign is a fixed Rashi and Saturn's own house and it will have all the characteristics of the Saturn. What are the characteristics of the Saturn? Slow, inferiority complex, jealousy and all. Everything is rendered by Saturn to the native. So, when Saturn is in the 8th house from its own house Aquarius, that is from its ascendant house Aquarius, then all these characteristics of Saturn will vanish. So, when Saturn is in the 8th house from its own house Aquarius, which is a fixed sign, and since the house where the Saturn resides is a friendly house, it will deliver benefits. In any situation, the Saturn should not be in conjunction with Rahu. When Saturn is in conjunction with Venus or Jupiter, Saturn gets Subhatva. When Saturn is in conjunction with Mercury in the house of Virgo, then it will spoil the Mercury and the Saturn will gain Subhatva. Consequently, the major planetary period of the Mercury will not be good, whereas that of Saturn will be good. Saturn will also gain Subhatva when it is in conjunction with Jupiter. In any situation, Saturn should not be in conjunction with Rahu. When Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Virgo, it will spoil the Mercury's significance, such as maternal uncle, because the Mercury can represent the maternal uncle, the husband of the sister, and even father-in-law, or the relations related to the uncle. The person will not have a good rapport with whoever he calls or he addresses as his uncle because the house of Virgo represents the uncle. The intelligence of the person will be spoiled. When Saturn is Pabatva in the house of Virgo, it will spoil the education of the person as well. It will spoil the intelligence. If a person undergoes the major planetary period of Saturn or Rahu during the youth, then there will be no education at all. The house effect and the significance both will be spoiled. 
So, when Saturn and Rahu reside in the house of Virgo, then the person will not be intelligent, there will be a hindrance in the education, the person will be merely mugging up and he will not learn the subjects properly. This is how you have to make predictions. In a nutshell, the Saturn can reside in the house of Virgo, but it should not be Pabatva. When Saturn is alone in the house of Virgo, it will deliver benefits. When Saturn is Subatva in the house of Virgo, by connection of Jupiter or Venus, then it will deliver more benefits. When Saturn resides in the house of Gemini, Taurus, Libra and the house of Virgo, that is the houses of friendly planets, Saturn will deliver benefits. Taurus and Libra or the own house of Venus, Gemini and Virgo or the own house of Mercury. When Saturn resides in any of these four houses, then Saturn delivers benefits. I also used to say that Saturn getting exalted in the house of Libra, it is not really a favorable one because it will deliver the significance of Saturn more. The next planet that I am going to explain is Rahu. There is a famous Tamil poem from Jataka Alangaram. Aamedam yerudu sura nandu kanni aindedatthil karunagam amandu nirkil poo medai tanil tuyilum rajayogam potriduvar veru innu pugalat kelai. Based on this very famous Tamil poem written by an astrologer, we say that when Rahu resides in Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn, it is said to be very auspicious. But when Rahu resides in the house of Virgo, the Mercury needs to be very strong. The Mercury should be in exalted state. See how beautiful the intricacies are in Vedic astrology. The Mercury, that is the dispositor, should be exalted, but I also say Rahu should not be in conjunction with an exalted planet. How it is possible? I have often reiterated this point in my videos. Rahu will deliver great benefits when it is in conjunction with a debilitated planet. Rahu is the planet which can deliver great benefits when it is in conjunction with a debilitated planet but Rahu should not be in conjunction with an exalted planet and I had already explained the reason in a lot of my videos. Please watch my videos to know the reason, the intricacy behind this concept. I have also written in my articles regarding the same. Please read those articles. Rahu that is in conjunction with the exalted planet will not deliver benefits. So in the house of Virgo, how Rahu can be in conjunction with an exalted planet, the dispositor, it can happen only implicitly. For example, Rahu can be in conjunction with the Sun and the Sun and Mercury should be in Parivartan Yoga. During the month of Puratasi, that is Badrapath, that is mid-September to mid-October, the Sun will be in the house of Virgo and let us imagine that Mercury is in the house of Leo. Then there will be Parivartan between the Sun and the Mercury. So, when the dispositor of the house of Virgo, that is Mercury, gets exaltation status implicitly, then Rahu, that resides in the house of Virgo, will deliver such a great benefit. When the planet Rahu is in conjunction with the debilitated Venus in the house of Virgo, Rahu will be ready to deliver all the significance of the Venus and in addition to this, when there is Parivartan of Venus and Mercury, then Mercury gets exalted indirectly. Yet, it is not in conjunction, that is, the exalted planet Mercury is not in conjunction with the Rahu, yet the dispositor of the house of Virgo gets indirectly exalted. Based on this intricacy, the Rahu in the house of Virgo will deliver great benefits. Please always remember that dispositor of the house where Rahu resides should always be exalted in order to deliver benefits by Rahu. 
At the same time, Rahu should not be in conjunction with the exalted planet. Therefore, if Rahu resides in the house of Virgo, if it should deliver benefit, it demands the exaltation of the dispositor. Yet if Mercury is in the same house in conjunction with Rahu, it is not good. Therefore, the Mercury should be in Parivartan with Venus, where Mercury gets exaltation status indirectly. Only by this way, the Mercury will not be in conjunction with Rahu. At the same time, it can attain the status of exaltation as well and Rahu can deliver benefits. All these predictions have to be made based on which house the house of Virgo is to the ascendant. If this particular house is the third house or the eleventh house, then Rahu will deliver great benefits. But remember, this Bhava should not be the sixth house. It is usually said that it is beneficial when Rahu is in three, six and eleven houses. Yet, you might wonder why I say that Rahu should not be particularly in the sixth house to the ascendant. In order to know the intricacies, please read the article that I have written titled Intricacies of Rahu. Therefore, the house of Virgo is auspicious for Rahu. The Rahu that resides in the house of Virgo will deliver benefits provided the dispositor Mercury is exalted or with good strength. Here the Rahu should get Subhatva and it should never be in conjunction with Saturn or Mars. When Rahu resides in the house of Virgo, it can reside in the star Chitra whose planet lord is Mars. Here, Rahu gets a connection with Mars which is not said to be good. When Rahu gets a Mars connection or Saturn connection, it is not good. The Nakshatra Lord, that is the Star Lord of Rahu, is also important which is ranked as 5 among all the Grahabala, that is planet strength. So, Rahu should not get the Saturn or Mars connection even by Nakshatra Lord. When Rahu resides in the house of Virgo, if the dispositor Mercury gets indirectly exalted and Rahu is in connection with Jupiter or Venus, then during the major planetary period of Rahu, Rahu will deliver great benefits and when Rahu resides in the houses 3 or 11 or in the trines and quadrants, it will deliver great benefits. It should be in conjunction with the Lord of the Quadrant and when Rahu resides in the quadrant, it should be in conjunction with the Lord of the Trine. So, when the house where Rahu resides is an auspicious house for the Ascendant, then during the major planetary period of Rahu, it will deliver great benefits. Let me explain the next planet Ketu. When Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, it is really auspicious. When Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, Scorpio and Capricorn, that is Kanya, Vrikshik and Kumbh, it is very auspicious. If Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, then the person will be a scientist. When Ketu has connection with the house of Virgo, it delivers Manyanam and Vinyanam, that is both the spiritual knowledge and scientific knowledge. So, when Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, it delivers benefits. You have to also consider the auspiciousness of the Bhava, that is, which Bhava of Virgo is to the Ascendant. Whatever rule we applied for Rahu applies for Ketu as well. Let me reiterate the rules now. The dispositor of the house where Ketu resides should be exalted or should be in good strength. Ketu should be in connection with the natural benefits like Jupiter and Venus. Ketu in the house of Virgo will deliver benefits. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, it is good. Ketu is a foreign planet. It is a planet that gives both spiritual knowledge and scientific knowledge. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, the person will be a sage, will be a scientist. It depends also on the status of Mercury in the natal chart. When Virgo becomes the 10th house, it is really good. For example, for the natives of Sagittarius Ascendant, the house of Virgo will be the 10th house. 
Ketu will grow the house where it resides. In brief, when Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, it is good. Well, in the upcoming video, I'm going to explain about the favorable Dasha for the native of Virgo Ascendant and I'm going to share much more intricacies about astrology. And this is question time. When Saturn and Venus are in close conjunction, with no other benefic or malefic connection, whose major planetary period will be bad? That is, whose Dasha will be bad? The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.